All right, this next pro tip is one of my favorite ones. It's a really clever way to combine text formulas in Excel to count the number of words within a cell. And anyone who's familiar with text functions has probably heard of the length or LEN formula, which essentially just calculates the number of characters in a, a word string or a text string. And that's helpful, but not quite what we need here since we're trying to calculate the count of whole entire words. And so to do what we need to do, we're going to need to get a little bit creative here and combine some additional functions like substitute and trim to get what we need. So for our demo, we're going to be looking at some wine tasting data where we have these taster descriptions in column F. And our goal is going to be to create a word counter in column G that counts the words from column F. Simple as that. Now what we'll end up with is something that looks kind of like this, which is a little bit of a beast. It may not make much sense at first glance. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through every single step of this function until you understand exactly how it's working. Now use cases here, obviously like we're talking about, adding counters in cases where word counts are important, or analyzing text fields, things like tweets, blogs, uh, search ad copy, uh, whatever it might be, based on the length. So a lot of different practical places where you could use this tip. Now let's jump into our pro tips workbook and actually build a word counter of our own. Okay, so we're looking for the counting words demo. It's one of our green tabs. If you're in your table of contents, go ahead and press link and we'll jump straight out to the tab. And right here, we've got our wine tasting data. We're looking at the wine name in column A. Uh, the variety in column B, we've got the individual taster names here in column C, and column D is the one we care about. This is their actual written description uh, from their tasting. And what we're looking to do is use those text functions here in column E to calculate the number of words in those descriptions. So what I'm going to do is kind of break this down bit by bit, and then we're going to assemble the pieces together in order to create what we need. So Perhaps the simplest individual piece is the LEN or length function. And to show you what that does, we're going to take the length of cell D2. It's as simple as that. You just point to a cell containing some text, press enter, and it returns 58, which is not the word count. It's the character count. So keep that number in the back of your mind. This original description contains 58 total characters. Now the next piece that we're going to be using is a formula called substitute. So I'm going to just overwrite that length function with substitute. I always have a hard time spelling this one for some reason. And the way this substitute function works, there we go, we can see it a little bit better, is we're going to point to our text field again, right, D2, and now we're saying, what in the original text string are we looking to substitute? What's the old or original text? This could be an individual character, it could be an entire word, an entire string of words. In this case, what we actually want to substitute is a space. So I'm going to open up a quotation mark, add a space, and close it off, and then comma to the next argument, which is, OK, that's the text you're looking for. Now, what do you want to substitute for that space? And in this case, this is where it kind of gets a little bit clever, right? Is we actually don't want to replace that space with anything. We want to get rid of the space entirely. And to tell Excel that's what we want, I'm going to type two consecutive quotation marks, basically just like I did, but without the space in between them. And because we want to replace or substitute every instance of those spaces, we don't really care about this last optional argument, the instance number. We're just going to close the parenthesis, press enter, and what you end up with is something like this. Berry and cherry aromas are surprisingly sturdy and clean. It's the text string that we had originally in D2, without any of the spaces. So now if we go ahead and modify that formula, click right after the equal sign, what if we take the length of this new modified string that we created? Close the parenthesis at the end, press enter, 50. Okay, so we know the original string was 58. Now we know that the version of the string with no spaces is 50. By taking the difference of those numbers, we can essentially count the number of spaces that we pulled out or removed or substituted. So it's as if we used a function like count if text equals space, but unfortunately that doesn't exist in Excel, which is why we're taking this approach. 
So let's go ahead and actually take that difference in the formula. Again, I'm going to modify right after the equal sign. I'm going to take the length of our original string, d2, minus our new length of that substituted version of the string, and that will give us the number 8. Let's drag this back in here. So we've removed 8 spaces, and we can check because this is a pretty short description. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 spaces were in fact removed. But we're not quite there because if you count the words, there are actually nine words because every sentence is going to begin and end with a word. So there's always going to be one more word than the number of spaces. Very simple adjustment to make. Just add one to the end of our formula, press enter, and there you go. We get a word count of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we should be good to go by simply double clicking, applying it down. And there you go, it's going to take the word count for every single one of these descriptions. You can count them to confirm if you'd like, but trust me, they're getting the job done. Now the only other piece that we can add, if we want to take one more measure of, uh, I guess, security, you could call it, to account for cases where, you know, there may be a leading space, you know, accidentally like that, which would indicate that there's a tenth word when there actually uh, is not. To account for that, we're going to use that trim function, and all we're going to do is just nest it in here. So instead of the length of d2, we're going to take the length of the trimmed version of d2. And same logic, instead of substituting d2, we're going to substitute the trimmed version of d2 right here as well. So I'm just nesting that within the function here, and I think we need one more closing parenthesis there. And let's give that a shot and press enter. There we go. So now it's been corrected to nine, which is what we want here. Same thing if we add trailing spaces like this, whether it's one, whoops, or two or three or four, it doesn't matter. That trim is going to account for that for us and strip out those leading or trailing spaces. So now we can apply that down and voila, we've got a fully functional word counter in Excel.